Okay, today is our second meeting concerning the Celestine Prophecy. And today I'd like to focus on the fourth and sixth insights, which have to do with the way that we communicate and the roles that we play. We mentioned last week that we tend to play these roles uh, that uh, we mentioned in the Celestine Prophecy that we tend to play these roles in order to protect ourselves from being controlled by others. These are power games. And also to get from other people what we need, feel that we need to have from them. That could be their attention. It could be their love. Uh, it could be their obeying us, their doing what we want them to do, that we can control them. Uh, can be their acceptance, their approval. Hmm? Basically, we do this for three reasons, or say four reasons, so that we can ensure that our self-worth is affirmed by these people. Secondly, that we feel secure that they are being controlled by us and that we can get at any time what we need from them and uh, also that <coughs> we uh, we be free that they will not be able to control us so it's a it's a control a war of who is going to control who huh? and fourthly that we will be able to fulfill any desires any needs any habits that we have with these people now we mentioned that there are four ways in which we try to control the other and in which the other tries to control us. We spoke about the intimidator who uses fear, so that if I'm an intimidator, then I make you, f I threaten you in some ways, making you believe that if you do not do what I want you to do, or if you don't leave me alone and stop asking from me, because it works in both ways, then uh, something unpleasant is going to happen to you. The second role is, is the role of the interrogator who plays with the other person's need for acceptance. So what I do is I criticize, I ask questions, I interrogate. And this puts the other person on the defensive. And I take energy whenever you are apologizing when you whenever you are trying to prove that you are right to me and I am sitting in the role of the judge or the lawyer then I get energy from you you are paying attention to me you are being controlled by me I am controlling you I am making you do what I want you see and also if I criticize you enough I may be able to force you to change your behavior so that so that you won't experience my criticism anymore. So you might stop, stop doing something that I don't want you to do, just so that I'll stop criticizing you. Or you might start doing things the way I would like you to do them, just so that you will avoid my critical nature. The third role is the role of the victim. And we say that the victim plays with our need uh, to feel that it plays with our guilt, that is, it makes us feel guilty that we are responsible for the victim's unhappiness, for the fact that the victim is not satisfied. Okay? So this happens especially when we tend to be in the role of the savior, of the parent, of the teacher. These three roles, in these three roles, we take responsibility for the other people's reality. And I'm not talking about a parent to a child. I'm talking about any person to any person. I can get in the role of the parent or the savior or the teacher 
with a person 30 years older than me. It has nothing to do with actually being a parent or a child. Although a parent usually gets into this role with his child and a teacher with his student. And so when we feel responsible for how the other person is feeling or, or progressing in his life or whether they're satisfied or happy or healthy or successful, as we do with our children, then w we become unhappy when, that, when we don't have that result in the other person. So the other person can control us by making us feel unsuccessful or guilty by not being well. And so they play with our sense of guilt or our sense of responsibility for their reality. And the fourth category, as we mentioned last week, is the aloof person who protects himself by not communicating, not expressing feelings, not expressing needs, and what they usually do is has a long face, mutra, as we say in Greek. That is, he has a, this long face, and as long as he has this long face, this sad face or unexpressive face, then I feel that maybe I have done something, maybe I am to fault, or maybe this person is angry with, at me or not pleased with me. So he doesn't say anything. And this is the way, you know, this is bordering on the victim, you know. Uh, and so it could either be the victim that he is hurt and he's not talking to us or he's angry and so then he's like the intimidator he's angry and he's, he's punishing us by not talking to us and the threat here is that I'm not going to talk to you unless you are the way I want you to be but regardless of that some people are just aloof in order to protect themselves emotionally they may not have any problem with us, but they just don't feel safe in expressing themselves. And that still creates a problem because it, we don't know what they're feeling, what they're thinking, and that creates a need in us to approach them and to ask them to please open up to us. So the aloof person, on the one hand, protects himself energy-wise by not getting evolved emotionally, and secondly, by causing us to seek his attention and that he gets energy from this. Now, we mentioned last week that the solution to this is to become an adult, which means to express our needs as an adult without having to get into the role of the interrogator, the intimidator, the aloof, or the victim, which means just saying what we need. Do I need love? Do I want attention? Do I want affirmation? Do I want some help? Do I need some specific behavior from the other person? That is, rather than playing these games, rather than intimidating or accusing or criticizing or complaining or crying, or rather than not expressing myself at all, waiting for the other person perhaps to guess what I want and what I need because I don't express it, I simply express what I need. 